Hello and welcome to another of my chemistry videos. Today we're going to talk about limiting reactants. The Nevada State Science Content Standard states that students know that in chemical reactions, elements combine in predictable ratios and the numbers of atoms of each element do not change. Our objective for this video Upon completion of instruction, students will be able to write a mole ratio relating two substances in a chemical equation. Okay, now if you'll remember uh, from the stoichiometry videos that a mole ratio is required for every stoichiometry problem. And limiting reactants requires you to have a good understanding of stoichiometry. So if you're not quite there yet, you're, you don't quite get stoichiometry, uh, you better go back and, and try again uh, to, to figure it out because the water is getting a little deeper and if, if you can't swim, you better get back in the shallow water. Okay, a limiting reactant. There is the reactant that limits the amount of the other reactant that can combine and the amount of product that can form in a chemical reaction. An excess reactant is the substance that is not used up completely in a reaction. In other words, if we have a reaction, and I have a little visual for you here, you have to have two reactants that, that combine in, in each of these problems. One is going to be a limiting reactant, and the other is going to be an excess reactant, and they're going to combine to form at least one product. Okay, so a little visual here. If I have two containers of filled with with reactants which one would you think would run out first now granted this is just a visual re representation to help you to see how this works uh, most people are going to say okay this one right here there's less of it so it's going to run out first well if that's the case then this is the limiting reactant it will limit how long this reaction can go on as soon as this is used up, it's reaction over. It doesn't matter how much of this green reactant here is, is, is left. It, it, it can't do anything. It can't react all by itself because it ne you need two reactants to form a product. So in, in keep in mind throughout all of these problems, the limiting reactant is the one that's going to run out. And when the reaction's all over, you're going to have some excess reactant. And the limiting reactant determines how much of each product can be made. So when we're doing stoichiometry and we're trying to figure out how much of a particular product can be made, it's always the limiting reactant that's going to determine that. And by, this, by the same token, when we work this backwards, say the reaction's all over with, we have a certain amount of, of a product or, or several products. Each one of those products, we can work it backwards to determine how much X, how much of this reactant, the one with excess, how much of it was used to make it. And then once we know how much of it was used, we can subtract it from what we started with and, and we'll know how much excess reactant there is. Uh, it might all seem a little confusing right now, but as we get into it, hopefully things will be cleared up a bit. So let's, let's try one. Okay, a limiting reactant. We have to have a balanced chemical equation it's like any stoichiometry problem. So we have some SiO2 plus some hydrogen fluoride, make some SiF4 plus some, some H2O, some water. So if we have six moles of hydrogen fluoride and it's added to 4.5 moles of silicon dioxide, which is the limiting reactant? Okay, remember, these are the reactants, and our word problem is telling us how much of each is put in. It, it's just like before when you had the picture with the, the two reactants in the containers. We need to find out which one runs out first. So using a little stoichiometry, we're going to start with six moles of hydrogen fluoride, our first reactant, and we're going to do a mole-to-mole -mole ratio where we can pick either one of these products to work toward. The, the problem doesn't ask us which one Run, you know, we have to make. So, so we can choose. <clears throat> it also doesn't tell us if we have to go to grams or to moles. And so rather than make things difficult on yourself, take the easy way out. Go to moles. This mole to mole uh, stoichiometry problem is, is far easier than going to grams. So we start with our six moles, hydrogen fluoride. If we have moles of hydrogen fluoride on the top, we have to have moles of hydrogen fluoride on the bottom. And so we go up to 
our balanced equation, and right here, this coefficient is 4. So in other words, there are 4 moles used to, to balance this equation. So 4 moles of hydrogen fluoride, and we're going to, we're going to use this reactant, the silicon fluoride. We're going to moles of silicon fluoride. So we look over here at this product, and there is no coefficient. So that means there's 1 mole of it there. So here we have set up our, our first mole-to-mole -mole stoichiometry problem. So generally reduces down, the math is just 6 divided by 4, and 6 moles of hydrogen fluoride can produce 1.5 moles of <clears throat> silicon fluoride. Okay, so going to our next problem, our next stoichiometry problem, we, it says we put in 4.5 moles of silicon dioxide. So here we're doing our other product, excuse, our other reactant, and we have to go to the exact same product to find out how much the, the 4.5 moles of silicon dioxide could make. So 4.5 moles of silicon dioxide. We have moles of silicon dioxide on the top, so we have to have moles of silicon dioxide on the bottom. And we have one again because no coefficient means there's only one mole of it. And over here, the silicon fluoride has no coefficient either, so it's, it's one again. So this mole-to-mole -mole ratio re is really just going to cancel out. So for every 4.5 moles of silicon dioxide, we can make 4.5 moles of silicon fluoride. So the product that comes out to be less, 1.5 moles of silicon fluoride can only be made by our 6 moles of hydrogen fluoride. So that tells us that hydrogen fluoride will run out first. Therefore, it's the limiting reactant, because once we run out of this 6 moles of hydrogen fluoride, the reaction's done. Once this is gone, we have some excess of this, and we have some product. Reaction over. All right, let's move on. Let's give you a chance to try this. And again, you can, at any point, stop the video and go back, do whatever you need to. Um, here's our, our problem. Considering the following reaction, we have some silicon and some nitrogen that are going to combine to form a product. Okay, when we put in 21.44 moles of silicon and it reacts with 17.62 moles of nitrogen, how many moles of our product, silicon nitrate, are formed? Okay, so first what you want to do Let's make that a little bigger. First, what you want to do is take your first product, 21.44 moles of silicon. And again, this doesn't tell us that we have to go to grams, so take the easy way out. Go to moles. Simple mole-to-mole -mole ratio is going to make your life a lot, a lot easier. Okay, so we have moles of silicon on the top. So on the bottom, we're going to need moles of silicon. And we're going to get that from a problem up here. It says in the in our balanced equation that there are three silicons, three a coefficient of three means three moles of silicon. And over here we have silicon nitrate. <clears throat> there's no coefficient, so that means there's only going to be one mole. So there we have our first mole to mole ratio set up. Our our uh, stoichiometry problem. So doing our math, we come up with that this particular reactant is going to be able to make 7.15 no moles of silicon nitrate. Okay, moving on. We have to look at our other reactant, the nitrogen. The nitrogen we put in, the board problem says 17.62 moles of nitrogen. This is our other reactant. So we have a problem for the first reactant, for the second reactant. So if we have moles of nitrogen on the top, we go to our our equation, there's a coefficient of a 2, which means 2 moles of nitrogen put in. And we're going to the same product. Of course, there is only one product this time. No coefficient means there's 1 mole of silicon nitrate. So we do our math, and we get nitrogen being able to make 8.81 moles of silicon nitrate. So the one that can make less product 7.15 moles of our product is silicon, meaning that silicon is our limiting reactant. It runs out first. 
So silicon's our limiting reactant. Nitrogen will have some leftovers. In other words, it will be our excess reactant. All right, let's move on. Here we have another problem. When 3.22 moles of aluminum reacts with 4.96 moles of hydrogen bromide, how many moles of hydrogen are formed? Okay, now this is a little different than what we had in the past. Because the problem tells us exactly which product we have to go to. So we're going to have to do a stoichiometry problem going from moles of aluminum to moles of hydrogen and another stoichiometry problem going from moles of hydrogen bromide to moles of hydrogen. So first problem, 4.96 moles of hydrogen bromide and our balanced equation says that there are six moles, six, the coefficient of six, in other words, six moles of hydrogen bromide, so the top and bottom, so we can cross cancel units, and we're going to moles of hydrogen, so there's three of them according to our equation, balanced equation. So now it's just a matter of simply doing the math to find out how much hydrogen this can make. 2.345 moles of hydrogen if we put in this much hydrogen bromide. So let's look at our other one. I'm just going to erase the whole thing right here because by now I think you, you kind of got a clue on how this works. We have 3.22 moles of aluminum put in. We have a coefficient of a 2 in front of the aluminum, so that tells us 2 moles in our mole-to-mole -mole ratio. So moles of aluminum top, moles of aluminum bottom, 3 moles of hydrogen again and the aluminum will allow us to make 4.83 moles of hydrogen. So looking at these two, the hydrogen bromide says we can only make this much because it's going to run out, so this right here is the maximum amount of hydrogen that can be made, 2.345 moles of hydrogen. And at the same time, we've actually answered our second question, hydrogen bromide makes less hydrogen, meaning it runs out first, so it is the limiting reactant. Now we're going to get a little bit more in depth into these limiting reactant problems. We're also going to calculate excess reactants and how much excess reactant there is. Okay, first we're going to do the same thing that we did before, and I've got these all set up and worked out so that you can look at them. I'm just going to talk through them. Okay, A, we're going to find the limiting reactant. We have our balanced equation here. We're going to put in 36 grams of water, one reactant, and 67 grams of iron, it's our other reactant, and find out which one can make the least amount of product, thereby making it the limiting reactant. Okay, now looking at B, we're going to look ahead here a little bit. B says we have to find how much iron oxide is produced in grams. Okay, since we're going to have to go to that anyway, why don't we just find that product? It will save us a little bit of time when we get to B. So in finding A, I'm going to go from each of these to this right here. I'm still going to go to moles because it is the easiest one to do. Okay, so putting in 36 grams of, wa of water and putting in 67 grams of iron, I set up a grams to moles for the water, because we have to convert to moles, starting with grams this time. So one mole of water, molar mass of water, Okay, now we've got mo grams on the top, grams on the bottom. We've got moles of water top, so we have to put moles of water on the bottom. We're up to our mole-to-mole -mole ratio. We go to our equation, four moles of water, so the coefficient of four. One mole of iron oxide, because there is no coefficient. And now we've got our stoichiometry problem set up. The very last thing we have here is what we're trying to find, moles of iron oxide. So we do our math, just push it in the calc punch it in the calculator, we get 4.99 moles of iron oxide. Now we do the same thing with our other reactant, which is iron. 
it says we put in 67 grams of iron. So 67 grams of iron, we have to convert that to moles. Use our molar mass, our periodic table, 55.85 grams of iron for every one mole. We have moles on the top, we have to set up our mole to mole ratio. So we have moles of iron on the bottom. Again, this has three moles of iron because we have a coefficient of three in our equation. Three moles of iron for every one mole of iron oxide, three to one. So if we do our math, that comes out to be 0.4 moles of iron oxide. Now, you can see how rounding might mess you up just a little bit, so try and be accurate with these. Okay, now we know that our limiting reactant is the one that makes the least amount of iron oxide. Iron makes only 0.4 moles of iron oxide. So for A, iron is the limiting reactant. Now, having used this product, iron oxide, going to that product, we've actually saved ourselves a little bit of work on B because we have to find the mass in grams of iron oxide produced. We know that this right here, 0.4 moles of iron oxide, is the maximum amount of iron oxide that can be produced. So for B, all we really have to do is a simple moles to grams conversion. No stoichiometry involved here. So we start out with 0.4 moles of iron oxide, and for every one mole of iron oxide, it weighs the molar mass of iron oxide. So again, just some simple pushing buttons on a calculator, and we come out with 92.6 grams of iron oxide produced. Well, we've got B answered. The only one left is C, and this is new. You haven't seen this. Find the mass in grams of the excess reactant remaining. All right, we know that iron, we already figured this out, iron is the limiting reactant. So the other reactant is the one that's going to have leftovers. Water has leftovers. This When this reaction is all over, our, our iron is gone. We have a certain amount of iron oxide. We have a certain amount of hydrogen. Well, we just figured out exactly how much iron oxide there is. So we can take that amount of iron oxide and convert it back to water. The, the amount that we calculate will be how much was used to make this. So that's the interesting thing about stoichiometry. We, we don't just have to go from reactants to products. We can also go from products to reactants. So again, we know exactly how much iron oxide was produced, and we can calculate how much water it took to make that. So let's do that first. Okay. Again, we have 0.4 moles. We figured that out earlier in A. 0.4 moles of iron oxide. We're going to calculate how many moles of water, or excuse me, how many grams of water it took to make this 0.4 moles of iron oxide. Because that, once we reached this point in, in our equation, it, it was reaction, reaction over. Okay, so moles to mole ratio. We, I'll scroll up here so we can see our equation. We have one mole of iron oxide, iron oxide had one, and we have four moles of water. So we have four moles of water, one mole iron oxide, our mole to mole ratio, moles of water on the top. We have to have one mole of water on the bottom to be equal to the molar mass of water. Push our buttons on our calculator again, we come out with 28.8 grams of water. Okay, now this is how much was used in the reaction to make the moles of iron oxide. Once we have what was used, we simply subtract it from what we started with. And you look back up here at our, wor our word problem, it said that we were given 36 grams of water to begin with. So if it, we had 36 grams of water and it took 28.8 grams of water that was consumed in the reaction, that leaves us an excess of 7.2 grams of water remaining. So the the answer for C, 7.2 grams of H2O remaining. Okay, we're about out of time for this video. This is going to be a, a two-parter on limiting reactants and excess reactants of introduce excess reactants. In our next video, we'll go over that a little bit more, maybe do a couple more examples and help you to understand it just that much better. Thanks for watching. See you next time.